Hi, Donovan here, and in this video, we're going to look at Camera X's Camera Provider Interface and the class that implements it, Process Camera Provider. This video assumes you're already familiar with Camera X use cases, so if you aren't or if you need a refresher, please check out our Camera X Concepts video linked in the description. We'll finish the app we started in the Camera X Setup and Permissions video, so make sure you've watched that one as well. In Camera X, a camera provider is an easy way to add camera functionality to your app while still giving you flexibility over certain implementation details, like enabling output image rotation or setting the output image format in image analysis. Additionally, with a camera provider, you can choose to use Camera X's preview view, or you can use a custom surface for your preview, which can come in handy if you use that surface in other parts of your app. In this video, we'll use Preview View because it makes things so much easier, but I'll point out where you could plug in your custom surface. Now let's take a look where we left off in our camera app. As a reminder, we're building an app that shows a preview and allows the user to take a picture. First, make sure that our top level reference to image capture is uncommented from the last video. Next, we'll implement the start camera method which will set up the use cases and associate them with our activity's lifecycle. In this method, we're going to use a Kotlin coroutine to handle an asynchronous callback, so we need to make it a suspend function. This video doesn't explain Kotlin coroutines, suspend functions, and coroutine scopes, so if you need more information, follow the Kotlin coroutines in Android link in the video description. Then, where we invoke the start camera method, we need to wrap it in a coroutine scope like this. Now we can implement the start camera method. Start by getting an instance of a process camera provider, which implements the camera provider interface. The getInstance method returns a listenable future which will contain the process camera provider instance. Thanks to the concurrent Jetpack API we included in our dependencies, we can wait for this listenable future result with the await function. Once we have the camera provider, we can proceed with our camera setup. First, we need to build the use cases our app needs, starting with the preview. We also need to call set surface provider, passing the surface provider on the preview view that we added to our view layout. This is where you can pass in a custom surface provider if you need to. Then we need to build the image capture use case like so. Also set the camera selector to pick the default front camera for a great selfie shot. Now, create a try block where we will bind the use cases to the camera provider. First, it's a good idea to call unbind all to remove any previously bound use cases. Then call bind to lifecycle on the camera provider, passing in this activity as the lifecycle owner, our camera selector, and the preview and image capture use cases. Note, that this function returns a camera object, which can be used to perform operations like zoom, flash, and focus. But we won't be implementing any of that in this video. Let's run this app on our trusty test device to see it in action. The first thing we see is the permission prompt to get access to the camera. I'll select while using the app so that the next time we open the app, the permissions will already be granted. And as you can see, the front camera is activated and the preview is being shown. You'll also see the Take Photo button, but nothing happens when we click it. That's because we haven't set it up yet, so let's do that now. In the OnCreate method, get the Image Capture button and call SetOnClickListener on it, invoking the Take Photo function in the callback. Now we need to define the Take Photo function. When the user wants to take a photo, First, define a name to use for the photo file. Then set up content values, 
which will contain the file configuration for Media Store to save the photo. Next, use Camera X's Image Capture Output File Options Builder, passing in the Content Resolver for Main Activities context, Media Store's external content location, and the Media Store configuration we set up in Content Values. Then, call Take Picture on the Image Capture use case to have Camera X handle the image capture, passing in the output options, an executor in which the callback methods will be run, and an on image saved callback object for handling the error and success states. Let's run the app again to see this new functionality. Now, when we click the Take Photo button, we see a toast message that the photo was successfully saved. And if we switch over to our Photos app, we see the photo there as well. Not bad, if I do say so myself. Congratulations! You now know how to create a simple camera app using Camera X's Camera Provider. We have a lot of resources that go further with the concepts we've covered in this video series, so check those out in the video description. Happy coding!